Hello, I'm Brandi Egger, back of loosetooth.com, and today is Tuesday. I am in the studio. This is Studio Tuesday. Today I want to talk about keeping drawing in proportion within your visual thinking. And I don't mean physically in proportion on the page, I mean mentally in proportion on how do we approach the drawing part of visual thinking. Now, in 2012, when I wrote the Graphic Facilitator's Guide, I was looking specifically at that role of being the one person in the room drawing for a group of people. And in that book, I describe the three skills that you are using in that role, which is listening, thinking, and drawing. Listening is the input. There's definitely seeing involved too, but listening is the input. Thinking is the processing, the organizing, and the thinking, and then drawing is the output. What I noticed in our field was that instead of the proportion being like this, where there are three equal skills, often what would happen is people would get super fixated on the drawing part and blow up that skill and get too, give too much emphasis to the drawing. Now, uh, I think this is very natural because what's happening is so many of us are getting into this work, into visual thinking, as a reaction against tools that aren't working for us. So certainly we are raised in a society and a culture that very much values words, words lined up on pages. And so for a lot of us, drawing feels like an act of rebellion. It may even be that, you know, you were a student and you were a doodler and your teacher got mad at you because you were doodling. So there's a lot of sort of like this, I draw kind of reaction. And uh, believe me, I am super, super, super duper pro drawing. But what's important to me and why I put these videos out and uh, do the work I do is that I want to help us broaden our definition of drawing and really, again, keep a certain specific type of drawing in proportion in our visual thinking. And that is that, uh, so, so to broaden our definition of drawing, that is exactly why I created the model, the Draw Quad. Uh, so if you go to my homepage, loosetooth.com, you will see the Brandifesto. And one of the pages in the Brandifesto is that specific model. There's certainly videos on it on my YouTube channel. And that's what this guy is. If you've seen this out in the world or on my site. <laughs> <laughs> um, the draw quad really is looking at four different reasons to draw to again broaden our definition of drawing because what happens is very often what we do is we fixate on drawing to see. Drawing to see is I draw your portrait and the portrait looks like you. That's representational drawing. Drawing something to look like the thing, look like the subject, that the drawing looks like the subject. Um, that is actually an incredible skill. It's a wonderful skill. I highly recommend developing that skill because I just think it's very good for our perception, for our hand-eye coordination. I think it is actually a very valuable thing to know. Here is the issue. It limits us in several ways. One, it limits us, our conception of being able to do this in the first place, to do visual thinking more broadly in the first place. If you think, well, I can't draw because at this point, you don't draw skillfully in when it comes to representational drawing. If you say, I can't draw, you've shut down access to being able to use visual thinking skills because, again, you're too narrowly defining what drawing is. So that's one issue. Another issue is you get into very limited binary thinking where you think, okay, well, if words, if words were the past and images are the future, and words are bad and images are good, then I must take all these words and translate them into images. And um, it, it gets you into a very strict binary thinking of like, here's a word, here's an icon, here's a word, here's an icon. Couple issues, one, I want you to do much more sophisticated thinking than that. Uh, really seeing how all the different pieces fit together versus just saying this equals this, X equals Y. Two, what happens when you run into a concept that's not concrete, that is abstract, that doesn't, isn't like DOG equals an icon of a dog? Then pff, your thinking just completely stalls out because you're stuck on that translation problem. 
So that's what happens a lot is it's, one, it's limiting identity wise. I don't do this, therefore I can't do that. Two, it's limiting that it gets us stuck in this binary thinking of translating words into images instead of thinking more broadly about how we can think spatially, we can think visually that's not specific to representational drawing. Even if that representational drawing is a really simple little cartoon of a dog, it's much broader than that. So um, I feel like there was another limitation. Maybe it'll come up later. <laughs> So I just want, again want to give you a little sneak peek at the Agerbeck method, take a peek at the idea shapers, and again to tell you about how I kind of keep drawing in proportion when I think about visual thinking. And I do hope that that proportion helps you see a way that you can broaden your definition of drawing and broaden the ability to take on these skills yourself, to do amazing thinking that helps you create clarity for yourself and take wonderful action Take those thoughts, get them out in the world. That's what we're looking to do. First, get those thoughts out of your head onto paper, take a look at them, figure some stuff out, and then whoo, go. <laughs> so just to give you a little bit of, a little more, a couple more examples of that proportion, this is the Idea Shapers. It is 423 pages. And this is, okay, let's see here. This is, okay, so this is the big fat 423 pages. All of this is very spatial and it's very visual, but it's not about representational imagery, generally speaking. There's a couple quick exceptions. This much is about actually drawing the thing that looks like the thing, but it talks about how to keep it in proportion. And this is demonstrated through what you see over here over my shoulder and you see here on this page, page uh, 396 in the book, the model is the image iceberg. Very simply, like, uh, you know, the iceberg metaphor is so useful because of the sense of proportion, is that so often when people think of drawing, they only think of pictorial drawing, and that's only this itty-bitty tip of the iceberg above the waterline. What's below the waterline, each one of these symbols, is one specific idea shaper from the book. So an idea shaper may be the fill, which is about using cross-hatching and shading to create depth and layers in your drawing. Or another idea shaper is the trio, using three colors, being very selective about color, as I like to say, use color a lot versus using a lot of colors. Those are two examples of, of um, idea shapers that are again living below this waterline that are very visual, they are very spatial, but they're not about pictorial imagery, representational imagery. And again, I just wanted to show you that proportion in the book. And the Agerbeck method is an online course. The modality is video. So now this object, is simply an overview of the nine modules of the course. Now, and it's fading just a little bit, so flow and canvas need a little touch up, but um, here you see the nine modules in the 90 day course. So just a different structure, just a different modality, but in both, you learn about each of these 24 idea shapers. What I love about the Agerbeck method, um, I think personally, I love video as a way to learn myself, I've so enjoyed creating these videos in the course um, that it's it broke down the complexity of visual thinking into those 24 idea shapers, but really laid them out day by day in these very specific, very learnable pieces. So the, the big strength of the Agerbeck method is sequence. It is, it is linear in the way that you're learning this lesson then the next lesson, then the next lesson, and they very, very, very much build on each other to uh, really build that visual thinking foundation. Now I had, it took me a while to get to this point because I don't think sequentially, but I know a lot of people learn sequentially, especially when you're learning something really complex. So again, each one of these circles that you see on this board is 10 days in the course, and each one of them is one major component to visual thinking. So within these, you have, each of these has a handful of the idea shapers. But again, it's a little context setting there, but what I wanted to point out was image, pictorial images, 
that's just this one module right here. That's only one ninth of the whole. Drawing is a lot of fun. I super love drawing. I just want you to add a whole lot to your visual thinking repertoire beyond that representational drawing. DOG equals a little icon of a dog that you can think about, you know, if I'm if I if the the, paper, the if the drawing I'm making is about dogs, what color scheme shall I use? <laughs> If I'm talking about uh, taking care of a dog, am I using scale in different ways within that drawing to show what is most important, like daily walks and, you know, pack dynamics versus something very, very small. I don't know what a very small thing would be. Maybe occasionally clipping their nails. You clip dog nails. I think you do, right? Yeah. I have cats. Um, <laughs> so, so again, you know, you're, you're bringing in these other visual elements below that waterline that, again, are helping you do, it, do more and more sophisticated visual thinking. Again, so you can get those ideas out of your head, onto paper, move things around, get things, get things in a new perspective, shape your thinking on the page that lets you get out in the world, get your ideas out in the world in beautiful, beautiful ways. That is today's Studio Tuesday. I definitely hope that this idea of keeping images in proportion is useful to you. There is no hard, fast rule. I'm not gonna tell you that, hey, look at your piece of paper, look at your drawing and say, it can only be 30% images. Don't pull that out as a quote. I'm giving that as a bad example. Um, it all really depends on what you're trying to do. So um, again, this is not about hard, fast rules. The main thing I want you to do is not get too narrow in your thinking. So again, you're not limiting yourself and thinking, I can't do this because I don't think of myself as an artist. I don't want you to limit yourself because you're thinking, I can't translate this particular concept into an image, therefore I've stalled out. Um, and I just don't, I want you to do much better visual thinking because you're using all these spatial tools, all these visual tools, not getting totally narrow on what visual thinking means is icon drawing. Because there's so much awesome, awesome, awesome visual thinking to do. And that is today here from the studio. I welcome your comments, I welcome your questions, and by all means, if you want to learn visual thinking yourself, I welcome you to pick up a copy of The Idea Shapers on Amazon. So just look up The Idea Shapers, or my last name, Agerbeck, A-G-E-R-B-E-C-K, <laughs> and uh, by all, or, or check out theideashapers.com, and by all means, if you want to join us, uh, over 100 people from 26 countries in the Agerbeck method. You can join anytime. Um, the videos are released by topic every three days or so. And uh, join this wonderful cohort of people. You know, the, you can participate as much or as little as you like, but we would welcome you in the Agerbeck method. Check that out at theagerbeckmethod.com. Links below. So thank you so much for watching. Wherever you are on this Tuesday, I hope you are well, and I definitely hope you will grab some paper and pen, get those ideas out of your head, onto that paper, move them around, get that new perspective, and get your ideas out into the world. <laughs>